Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Full Potential Show. I'm James Rick. This is your number one non-boring source for personal development. And today on the line, we have Lenore Miller. She's a business coach and consultant. She's here today to help you ignite your business mojo and get that spark back into your business. We are so happy to have her on the show, and she's going to help you figure out how to get things going again and talk about business in the way that we would relate normally with relationships. So Lenore, thank you so much for being on the show today, and let's dive in and talk about how we can ignite our business mojo. Awesome, my favorite topic. Well, first off, let's define what it means to have a business mojo. Is this a, is this a play off of Austin Powers? <laughs> well, it's really about that energy and spark and, you know, that extra bit of zing that, you you know, you want to have for running your business because being a business owner is, is really different to being an employee. You have to have that extra get up and go. So that's, that's your business mojo. Okay, so it's not showing up because you have to do some work. It's showing up because you're excited to show up. You're excited about what yep. you're doing, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. It's about you doing these because you're absolutely passionate, Fired driven, up. and you can do anything else. All yeah. right, and so now when you talk about igniting that, you're talking about helping them to find it because you're saying that everybody has it. That's what you're presupposing. Yeah, I, I think we all have that entrepreneurial spark with the innocence and, you know, a little desire to to go out there and do it on our own, but we often don't through you know, reasons like fear and stuff like that. But ultimately, you can trigger it off and you can spark it if that's what you truly want to do. Having said that, I guess business is not, always, not for everyone. Some of us, you know, like to have that regular income. But, you know, for those who really want to, you know, get that spark happening, then, yeah, there's a way well, to ignite your business I major. think that even if they're part of an organization, though, I think the organization itself can spark the mojo in its people. I think everybody has that spark oh. potential. And, yeah. uh, you know, dip, no matter what your role is, I think, and I, I think there are lessons here kind of as we talked before the interview that can help us do that. Um, For sure. So, yeah. and igniting that mojo is really, it's the process of helping people to discover the mojo that already exists and then sparking that. All right, so uh, I want to talk about, first off, uh, you mentioned before the show, how people approach their business kind of like a relationship. Let's go into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they do. It's like, you know, when you get the new idea and it like keeps you awake at night, it's a bit like when you're fully in love, you know, that new love phase where you can't think about anything else. You, you know, you eat it, think it, breathe it, you know, it's like consumes your whole being and a new business idea or something, an exciting project is kind of like that, right? <laughs> I can, yeah, definitely we can relate with that. And then and then what is yeah. the next what is the phase after that? Well, the phase after that is like in, in any relationship. You have the new love phase and then there's like the honeymoon phase. And, you know, in the honeymoon phase, it's like we ignore the little warning signs or the little things that are annoying because we're just so in love and, you know, it'll be all great. And, you know, you often hear people, you know, the dirty socks behind the bedroom door are almost endearing in the honeymoon phase. But when you roll on out of that, they're not so endearing anymore. So in the honeymoon phase of a business, it's like you've opened the doors and the customer Customers are hopefully showing up and you're really excited, but you're ignoring the little things you need to do, like, you know, the debt collection or the, you know, clean the windows or all those mundane things that have to happen that we perhaps haven't thought about before we got started. Okay, so I think the the lesson here you're pointing out is it's important, especially from a business standpoint, because this isn't just an emotional thing that you're jumping into, to look at all aspects of the business as objectively as you can, not getting lost in the emotion of starting this new thing, the, of the, the excitement of this new idea, you've got to look at it more deeply than that and kind of project out what it's going to be like yeah. long term before you start getting really into the business. Yeah, absolutely, because in that new love phase, like we've all had relationships where, you know, it's new love, they're great, they're going to be the one, and pretty quickly we find, actually, no, they're not the one, and, you know, we move on. Um, and in business what happens is people get into the new love phase, they get really excited about their widget that they've created that they think everyone's going to want to have, but they don't do the research to find out whether there's a market. Mm. So very quickly the, re the um, honeymoon phase moves into the reality phase and you know sometimes <laughs> okay. people come down with this huge thud you know it's like 
oh, everyone doesn't want my widget. <laughs> well, Nora, you don't, you don't have any, any of these experiences of going through these, uh, these love phases outside of business, do you? Oh, I think I might. <laughs> of course. All right, all right. And, so, and I think most people can relate. Yeah, so uh, I think everybody can relate. Um, so, so let's talk about uh, how you go through this process now. Um, you know, we understand that we've got to look at this objectively. We can't just jump into it in an emotional excitement. And we've got to decide whether this is something we want to pursue long term or not. Uh, now, you're in, uh, mm -hmm. in one of those places right now. Somebody may be in a business deciding whether or not it's what they want to pursue long term. Could be a new idea or it could be something sure. they've been doing for a while. Can you get the spark into that business no matter where they're at in that path? Uh, absolutely, because what I find with business owners is they fall in and out of love with their business. And once again, that's a bit like a long-term relationship, isn't it? That, that, you know, that love or passion or spark waxes and wanes and it takes some effort to maintain that relationship and business is the same. You know, sometimes we just fall out of love with it. It's become difficult. The day-to-day -day running's tough. And with most of the business owners I work with, they're in the, the small business market. You know, they only, they might be working for them just themselves or they might just have a couple of employees and it gets tough and I often see these business owners when they get to the point where they go wow I'm working so many hours I'm you know I don't have any time to myself and besides that everyone else is getting paid more than me mm. and so they very quickly go you know this is just too hard um, and there's so many things that you can do at that point in a business to reignite that spark and to get what they really want from their business because they've gotten so close to it, you know, they're not really looking objectively at what the possibilities are in their business. Okay, so let's talk about that. How do we get that spark back in? What are some of the steps or strategies that you've seen mm -hmm. work very effectively to get somebody back in the business and excited about it? Sure. The very first thing that I find is just actually sitting down um, or, you know, Skyping because I mostly Skype with my coaching clients is to really go through where they're at right now, what's going on in their business, where are they up to. And, you know, I have the skill of being able to look at that and then pinpoint the, the things that can be changed really quickly to turn things around. Um, and the other thing is that just to have someone else hear them and to get excited about their business makes a real difference. They're so close to it. They've forgotten about what the potential in their business truly is. And, you know, I, I love small business. So I haven't met a business yet that I can't get excited about and find additional potential. In. Okay. So, so what, what I'm hearing you say is no matter what business they're in, that you can approach it in a different way and get, get excited about it. It doesn't yeah. require changing the business is what you're saying. Not, not always, no, not always. Not always. And, um, you know, often in a long established business, there's some cool things that are great. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and, and you can, you, you help clients and then also people just should know that there's that potential to see it through a fresh pair of eyes and get excited about something that may have been going on long term that used to excite them, but now they're not looking at it in the same way anymore. You can get them back. Yeah. That. Or you encourage them to look at it. Yeah, it absolutely. And okay. Okay. And so yeah, absolutely. Like for example, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. There's a little delay. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Um, for example, one of my, you know, new clients that I've been working with just for two months in our first month, you know, because I was able to look at her business with fresh eyes, we were able to make one little tweak that added $15,000 a year to her bottom line. And that's just one tiny thing. And for her, that was the difference between her being paid and her working for free in her business. Mm. Now she'd had that business for 13 years. Hmm. You know, and her employees were earning more than she was. So I know over the next few months we'll be able to hmm. really, you know, refine that even more and have her being hmm. highly profitable. So this this goes along with so, making positive decisions, which I, I know is one of the next steps here. Um, yeah. Identifying not only what there is to be excited about, but then taking steps towards implementing the things that you're excited about because you can get excited about new ideas within the business but then you've got to implement those to make it a reality yeah 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 and the reality for day-to-day -day, uh, business owners that are running a business day-to-day -day, particularly in that you know tiny business with 
with less than five employees is that you're so in your business that you get caught up in the day-to-day running and you don't um, continue Zoom to out. do the things that you need to do to grow your business. And, yeah, and, and, so, yeah, um, so what the... Go ahead. Go ahead, Lenore. We, we, there's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. We do have a delay. Must be all those miles across the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah, so what happens is they are get so caught up in the day-to-day, they can't, they can't see beyond that to implement. So having someone outside their business with fresh eyes, helping them go, okay, so let's chunk this down. Let's just this week make this particular change. Let's get that implemented and then just make the next one. So it becomes like a bite-sized chunk. It's like how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. But right. we tend to want this colossal change to happen overnight like yesterday and all of a sudden our business is to be transformed. But the reality of life is transformation isn't overnight and it's, you know, it just seems like it is when you get to the end of that, you know. So yeah. making the decision to be that committed to just make those little changes and have someone assist you with that makes a huge difference okay so you don't have to go it alone it's wise to have somebody give you not only a fresh pair of eyes but help you chunk down the little changes you need to make to make the big change which is bound to occur if you continue to make little changes um, Absolutely. Let, let's talk about follow through how do you follow through in your business how do you suggest your clients follow through what suggestions do you have for implementing these new ideas that could take mm-hmm. the business or your life in a brand new direction yeah, absolutely. Look, I, you know, one of the things that I found I find the most important with my clients is their mindset is actually getting your head clear and be really straight about where you want to go. And, you know, getting that clear-headed approach is really important and it's something that most people are challenged by doing on their own when they're really bogged down in the day-to-day running of their business. And so for me, um, constantly development, developing myself and, you know, um, continuous education and really working on my mind space and where I'm going is the key beyond everything else because when I'm in the right space, then I take the actions I need to take to get the result that I want to get. Because my it's a very good direction. point. Yeah, you've got it. It starts with you. It starts with that clear mindset, the clear water before any mm-hmm. disturbance. How do you get yep. there? What do you do to clear that mind space? Wow. Um, that is an awesome, an awesome question. There's a few things that I do and and one of the really cool things to do is to find out what your mindset actually is. What is your entrepreneurial focus in business? And, you know, I created a, a questionnaire that people can take that kind of helps to hone that and that then allows you to know what you need to do on that level. In terms of your own headspace, mm-hmm. it's really about having some, you know, clear thinking time during the day, whether that's a walk first thing in the morning, okay. you know, whether you take five minutes in the shower to have a quick meditation or whether, you, you know, whether you're full in to meditate, whatever that is, to get yourself clear. Um, the other thing is asking powerful questions. So asking yourself the right kind of questions. And I know that you're, you know, a real mindset guy as well, but, you know, asking questions that empower you and give Give you positive answers. Your unconscious mind will give you anything you ask it for. So if you say, why am I so bad at business? Your unconscious mind is going to give you an avalanche of evidence to say that's true, you know. But if you're asking yourself, you know, what is it that I, you know, what is it that I could learn today? What is it that I could, you know, um, you know, who could contribute to my life today? All of those kinds of things, then you're going to find that avalanche of gotcha. information. Yeah, yeah it, it really does. Your brain is the best, your subconscious mind is the best answer of the questions you ask consciously. So become aware of your mindset. Uh, you, you talk about an entrepreneurial focus in business, which they can mm-hmm. go through the entrepreneurial mindset questionnaire on your website mm-hmm. at igniteyourbusinessmojo.com. Second thing is clear thinking in your own personal headspace, whatever that routine is for you, walking, the five minute shower in the morning, the meditation, clear that mind space. In fact, I think that should come before the entrepreneurial clarity because when you know what your values are, when you know your mind space is clear, I think you can think more clearly about your focus in business. Indeed. And and then thirdly, then you start asking powerful questions that are going to lead you to powerful answers that are going to lead to powerful actions. Mm -hmm. All right. Any final thoughts before we wrap up today's show? Uh, well, you know, I just have this belief that we all have this huge internal well of potential. And it's really cool to be on a show called The Full Potential Show for sure. But, you know, it's like we've all got that and it's how much do you want it? How much do you want to develop that 
in your business because you can really bring that out to create the business of your dreams and the lifestyle of your dreams, whatever that is. And it's it's just about how bad do you want it? Mm. How bad do you want to, you know, ignite your business mojo? How bad do you want to have that spark in your current business? And really, at the end of the day, it's up to you. Make that choice. Yeah. How bad do you want it? Because if you don't want it bad enough, you're not going to take the actions to make it happen. No, and you may as well just go be an employee. Well, and save yourself the pain. <laughs> well, the thing is, in business, a, a good business, and being an entrepreneur and being in business, I know that I can't do it without a team. So actually, when somebody mm-hmm. says, you know, why well, I, I work for you, I say, no, we work together. And I think it's important Absolutely. to make that distinction, Lenore, that there, there is that team effort that everybody can apply these things that you're talking about. Um, so, you know, I think it's important to make that distinction because there are a lot, a lot of people sure. out there that are employees, but they're also teammates that make a great team. Yeah. So, and I remember being an employee, I was so entrepreneurial in the businesses I worked for because really I wanted to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so, but, you know, they got a lot of value out of me. <laughs> and, you, and you can't do it alone. Um, and that's why you're there too as an entrepreneur serving other uh, business owners, entrepreneurs and being their coach. Uh, where can people learn more about this entrepreneurial mindset questionnaire that you have and about you on your website? Yeah, sure. They can go to igniteyourbusinessmojo.com okay. and the questionnaire is right there on the front page and they can have a look around and check out my book and find out more about me. Awesome. Okay, that's igniteyourbusinessmojo.com. This is Lenore mm-hmm. Miller. Uh, Lenore, thank you so much for sharing your insights today on how to get that spark back into the business. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a ball. Have a great day. Thank you, Lenore. All right. Well, that concludes this week's episode of The Full Potential Show, your number one non-boring source for personal development. I'm James Rick, and if you want to get more positive programming for your brain absolutely free on a weekly basis, just visit fullpotential.com. If you like The Full Potential Show, you're going to love The Full Potential Club. What would you like most as a Full Potential Club member? Be two to three times more productive? Do what you're passionate about? Have more energy? Reduce your work hours? Travel the world? Enjoy an amazing lifestyle on a frugal budget? What if you could do them all? James Rick has been there and done it in ways that few people have. For anyone serious about taking their life or business to the next level, you know you've got to do more than just watch. You've got to do. Join James Rick and other like-minded people for an incredible $10 a month at fullpotential.com slash club. Be educated. Be empowered. Be the best version of you. Fullpotential.com slash club. Try it free for 30 days.